Okay, now we're going to cover uh, using hash tables. Hash tables are very fast. Uh, a hash always takes a constant amount of time because it just has to do a few operations to look up uh, and find the item you're looking for. Um, so no, no matter how many items, it takes the same amount of time. Good example is Google. Uh, when you type in a search string in Google, it always comes back in the same approximate number of seconds no matter how many websites it has to search. And right now it's searching close to a billion websites and giving those, those results in uh, just a second or so. So what a hash function is, we're going to deal with hash functions and hash tables in this part of the chapter. A hash function is any function that can be used to map digital data of an arbitrary size to digital data of a fixed size. Uh, the values returned by the hash function are called hash values, hash codes, or hash sums, or simply hashes. Uh, so that's the definition of Wikipedia. Here's a little diagram. So you could be given a bunch of strings, like people's names, and you pass them through a hash function, and you end up with unique numbers. So you get a number for each string. And once you have it as a number, uh, it's going to be within a certain range. So hash functions are usually written with the letter H uh, as notation, and then you give the item inside. So H and then parentheses item. Uh, it is a hash function that has the input of the item, and the result is a integer in the range from 0 to m minus 1. And we're actually going to use the result of the hash function number to look up in a table or a list, and the list will be m long. So that's what the m refers to. So we're going to pass some piece of data through the hash function. It returns a number, and that number will index into our list. Uh, and the list will be size m, so the very last index will be m minus 1. So that's what it says here. The integer becomes an index into an array, list, or some kind of table of slots. For storing integer items, we're going to use this function first, h item. So the hash function will take the item which is going to be integers, we're actually going to store integers, and we just take modulo m, which is the size of our table, and we're going to have a table of size 11, so we're just going to be modulus 11, and you're going to see that all through our code uh, for this part of the chapter. So here's an example of how it would actually work. So here we have a table, and this shows you after we put everything in it, but first we'd make a table that has 11 slots with index numbers 0 through 10, um, all the slots would be set to none, meaning there's no data in it yet. So if we want to do a search, uh, we just have to get the hash value of what we're searching for, and we look in that slot, and we'd see if there's a value there or not. So here's how we put the items in. We do the same thing. We get the hash value. So here's the item we want to store, and here's its hash value. We just get it by taking 54 uh, modulus, uh, put that in here modulus 11. So 54 modulus 11 gives us 10. So these will be the slot numbers where we store these numbers. So once we've stored these six numbers, our hash table looks like this. So let's actually try this out. Uh, so I've written some code here. Okay, so here's the code. So I just wrote this really simple. I just made a, a list which is, has 11 slots of none. And I define the hash function here as just taking item and returning modulus 11. And by the way, if you you just have one line function, you can write it all on one line like this instead of uh, indenting this underneath. Uh, and then I have defined a put to put something in the hash table. So all it does is it looks up the hash for that item and uses that hash as an index. You see the square brackets into the hash table and then stores the item into that place. And then I wrote a function to see if the hash table contains an item. So it looks up the hash for the item, and then it gets that item from the hash table, and then it compares it to item. If they're equal, it's that that item has already been stored in the table. So this will return true or false. So I add some numbers. These are the same numbers that are shown in the book, and I print the hash table. And then I try out the contains function. So our table, we never added 22, so it contains 22, will return a false. And then I have, uh, there is a 17 in the table, so that should return a true. So let's go ahead and run it. 
and you'll see first it prints out the hash table so this should match the diagram in the book and then it says it doesn't contain 22 and it does contain 17 so our our hashing works so that's the basic idea uh, later in this section we're going to wrap this in our, its own ADT that will be standardized so when we have a hash function and we put some values in it we need to introduce some terminology that's going to become important so in the resulting hash table it has 11 total slots and we've already used up six of them so there's a very important number that has to do with the, the performance of hash tables and it's called uh, the load factor so you can see this table is six elevens full it's got six items with eleven slots so you could say it's fifty four point five percent full the load factor basically represents that so here's the definition how full a hash table is is called the load factor it's always represented with the lambda Greek symbol this so the definition is the load factor is just the number of items you have in the table divided by the total size of the table so in this case we have 6 over 11 or 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.545 and I just rounded it it actually keeps going it's a repeating fraction so the importance of this is if as this number approaches close to zero we have a lot of extra room in the table but as this number approaches one we're, we got the tables almost filled up uh, so we really don't want hash tables that are almost filled up because there won't be much room to put new things in and as they get close to filling up we'll see some other problems as well now to insert anything in the hash table takes a constant amount of time because all we have to do you uh, we'll go look at the code again you can see uh, to insert we just uh, we do one modulus operation here so we call this function and do a modulus and then we look at, we have the index and we just store it in the table so there's there's only two steps basically do the modulus and store it in the table and it's the same for accessing the table we just uh, do the modulus in this one calling this function and we look it up in the table so very fast um, now consider we're going to consider add, adding one more item to the table and we're going to see what happens here and just to show you this we're going to add 22 to the table that already has this data so the steps to add it we would take the hash of 22 which is 22 modulus 11 which is 0 so 22 has to go into the same slot as the 77 so this is actually called a collision or a clash we're going to be calling it a collision that's the official term uh, so we're going to have a little problem so we're going to look at how we solve this but let's look at how it works in code okay so we have our code here and we've already run it so what I'm going to do here is add one more item I'm going to say uh, well let's do it up here so we're going to put 22 so we're adding one more item and then we print the hash table and then we're going to ask does it contain 22 does it contain 17 and let's put one more print and we're going to ask if it contains 77 so 77 was in the table so this should return true 17 should return true and 22 should return true if everything's working so let's go ahead and run it and you'll see that you did the table no longer has 77 in it so where'd it go well it was in slot 0 but 22 wanted to use the same slot so we don't have any extra code it just replaced it so our basically our table has forgotten that it had 77 in it so then when we ask is 77 in the table you'll see it says it's false so we definitely have a problem here um, so let's talk about that so first of all in a perfect world we'd we could create a hash function uh, that would never cause this problem in other words every piece of data uh, would pick a unique slot in the table and we would never have two pieces of data overlap that's only possible if we know all the data items in advance so we'll just talk about this a little bit if we know all the items in advance and they're not going to change we can design a hash function that uh, maps that those items to a number or a slot in the table 
where every item is definitely unique. This is called a perfect hash function. Um, so one way to make a perfect hash function that's simple for that we could do so far is you just increase the size of the table until there's a unique slot for every item. Uh, but that may make the table really large. So there's other ways to do that. Uh, you can look it up on the web. There's different techniques. But it gets kind of complicated. But we don't have to make a perfect hash function. Uh, as long as we get close to really good performance, we can make other approaches. Uh, so we're going to look at how you do that. So as long as uh, the load is low, uh, meaning that you have a lot of the table that's unused, uh, the number of slots you use for the data is just a fraction of the size of the table, we're going to be very close to O of 1. And at the back of this section, uh, we'll actually talk about analysis. Uh, so our goal is to have a hash function that minimizes the number of collisions. So that's what we really want to have. Uh, so the collisions are items with the same hash value. And we also want one that's really fast to compute. We want to keep that constant time. Uh, so we just want a, a fixed number of operations to actually calculate the hash function. So let's talk about how we can create different kinds of hash functions. So let's suppose we want to do a hash function of a phone number. So you're given a bunch of phone numbers and you have to reduce this to a slot number in our 0 through 11 table. So how would you go about that? Now some of the things you want about a good hash, it should evenly distribute or have an equal probability of hitting any slot for whatever phone number we have. Uh, so it, it should have kind of a random distribution. And so a lot of uh, things, people that design hash functions try to, uh, to try to get that and they use different techniques. And they tried a lot of techniques. So we're just going to show you a few. So if you have a phone number, one technique is called uh, folding. What folding involves, you take all the digits and you group them into groups. So you basically take a long thing and you divide it into groups, then you add those groups together. So in this case, we're going to take the 43 and then the next two 65 and then a 55 and then the 46 and then the 01. So we're going to reduce our number to this list of numbers. We're going to add all those numbers together and then do modulus 11 and then we get our slot number. So that's one technique. That's called folding. Uh, there's, this is another technique. It's called the mid-square. When I first saw that this technique, I thought it was pretty weird, too. Uh, so if your items are numbers, what you can do is reduce your item, uh, or even if they're not numbers, you can reduce it to a number, like we did with the phone number. And then what you do, the number you get, you square it. And then you choose the middle digits. Uh, so, for example, 44 is the item we're going to store. We square 44, which is uh, 1936, and then we just take the two middle digits, the 93, and that becomes the number that we divide by 11 to get our hash value. Uh, if we had uh, more digits, we'd square it. Maybe we'd pick the middle three digits or the middle four digits, so you just pick some group of middle digits within the number. 